To my mind, what makes a really good slide player is not necessarily the slide work. It's the rhythm behind the slide. You know, you, you will have like certain artists nowadays, uh, modern artists who kind of go, <laughs> do all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, strangely enough, you never see, you know, players like Bonnie Ray going. It's like always guys. But anyway, that's a tangent. Um, you, you'll get this idea of the slide being the lead thing. And I guess that's partially because somebody else is often keeping the rhythm in modern music. But in this kind of music, you're keeping the rhythm and you're playing the slide. And the slide is one of those things that's kind of like the, the call. It is the, it's the second voice in the piece. So the first thing for me as, a, as an artist is I want to establish a cool rhythm. And so for this one, I often will just go. So that's just simply third string at the third fret, and I damp it. Little bend on the third string. Fourth string, third string, fourth string, third string, fourth string. Fourth string. Now, the way I hear this stuff, too, is it's not an alternating bass with your thumb. The thumb sometimes, well, the thumb rarely leaves the sixth string. It's kind of like a drummer. My, my grandmother was not a guitar player, but at some point she loved music, and she would tell me, she said, now, nah, I like the way you play, but, you know, you, you, got, to hit the, you got to hit that bass. And I go, huh? And so she, her advice was like, I ain't never seen nobody playing the blues who wasn't patting their foot. Hmm? So I think of this imaginary string between my foot and my thumb. And every time my foot hits, the thumb goes. It's like, it's like a kick or a snare, right? Uh, not a snare, but like a, a hi-hat, right? And the idea is, that that's your rhythm. Sometimes if you need a note, you'll actually go with your finger as high as the fifth string, finger or fingers, just so you don't violate that thumb, right? And in fact, a, a friend of mine uh, who was playing behind the great John Lee Hooker, um, he asked, he has Hooker, he said, I, you know, I don't want to mess your rhythm, but what, what do I do with your rhythm? And he said, just watch my foot. So that foot is really important in this music, right? So that foot is going, keeping that rhythm, and then that allows you to. Also, one other element. You'll notice I'm damping the bass. I don't want. although that might sound cool in another style or another artist, but for this stuff, you want that to be chunk. As I get into the song, I might just double that up a little bit. Now, what am I doing when I do that? I have to ask myself. It's like playing a drum on a guitar. And maybe you could hear it better if I don't fret anything and I just damp the strings. This is the rhythm here. After I do enough of this that I feel like I'm satisfied, that I've laid down my rhythm, I come with, with this little pentatonic idea. 
I've been rolling and tumbling, crying the whole night long. That's first string, fifth fret. Third fret, open. And that's sliding from the third fret to the open and then playing the G string open. Ideally, you want that, right? You give it a little pull off before you play the third string open. Put those two elements together and you get I've been ruling in my Another thing you can do, though, is because the human voice is so um, malleable. In other words, you don't always sing necessarily, rolling and tumbling, crying the whole night long. You might want to get a little bit more emotion in there. So on that pentatonic scale, you may go, rolling and tumbling, right? So how do you do that? You come so all the way up to the to the third to the uh, eighth fret and because you have the slide you want to keep it moving Sunhouse talked about this idea that the slide can't be played with a dead hand you're kind of always getting those microtones Right? So you want to take advantage of the fact that you're playing slide. Two other things about playing slide, if you've never picked up a slide before, is one of the things that I like to do is, is I like to put it on the pinky of my left hand because, again, that gives me these fingers to do other things with. You want to be really gentle. You want to, like, slide or glide, maybe is a better word, along the string. So you don't hear the frets. You're hearing those really smooth sound. That's accomplished by not getting a slide that's too heavy or pressing down too hard. And maybe the, the third element you might consider is that when you play um, a guitar without a slide, you aim for the space in between the frets. You may be close to the fret, but you're in that you're in this space, right? When you play with slide, you want to be over the fret. So when I say fifth fret, I mean literally right over that fifth fret. But the moment you move it, you get some flat, sharp, glissando vibrato. Right? This this little figure of sliding back, of sliding down, is a very delta sound. Right? So you've got those elements with the nice choppy rhythm.
Now, you have a choice. Like most of this blues, it's modular. You could either decide, I'm going to slide on this D string. I'm sorry, this G string. This G string. Seventh fret, fifth fret, and that completes the song. Uh, I woke up this morning to find my biscuit roller gone. Right? Um, that was actually on the D string. Or you could go, that's the G string. Strangely enough, they both work, depends, depends really on how you decide to sing it. Or you could go, could do that as your five chord. Just think in terms of a C shape. There's your five chord. There's your four chord. And open. Or one. So we go to the, to the five chord. It's really up to you. It's kind of, again, the idea of the module. One of the things you see in, or hear in some styles, though, is that idea of utilizing the fact that you've got a D string, a D string, and another D string, all across the board. And you've got two G strings, and you've got that B, right? So anything you do on a bass string, you could do, we'll say how that. You can do on the G string here or the G string here because you retuned it. Same thing is true on those, on those uh, D strings. So you've got all, those, all that good pentatonia available to you. And depending on who's doing the playing or the approach that you want, you can decide the feel of that song. It doesn't always have to be sort of happy and upbeat. And can I, I like it kind of like. But it could be. entirely up to you as a musician to decide how you might decide to approach rolling and tumbling. But it's a great tune to have in your toolkit, um, and it's a great one to improvise on. Once you learn a piece, it sort of becomes your piece, and you can do with it what you need to do with it to make it a part of your music. It, it creates mood. If you listen you know, to a soundtrack that maybe Ry Cooter does, 
Sometimes it's just all atmosphere. That's a palm harmonic, just lightly touch the strings, come over the nut, and she sings to you. I woke up this morning, find my biscuit roller gone. 